Can you move at 165 hertz? Can ya? How's it going everybody? This is Dave LeClaire with MEO Tech Bytes and I'm here to take you on a journey through the wide world of technology news and the biggest stories from the last 24 hours. There's been a lot of stuff happening in the technology world. I've been closely monitoring all of it and now I'm gonna break it down for you in bite-sized little chunks. So as a technology website, if there's one thing we see a lot of, it's phones. We get phones sent to us, we get press releases, we see other people's news articles. We see a lot of phones and it takes a lot for a phone to really catch our attention. But there's one that caught our attention recently and that's the Red Magic 6. Now this thing looks like a beast as long as you go with the pro version. The Nubia Red Magic 6 comes with 18 gigs of RAM, which as far as I know is the most ever in a smartphone. And that's impressive enough as it is, but even more impressive is the 165 hertz screen. Now we've been excited about phones that have a 120 hertz screen. So to get 165 hertz, that is an absurdly fast refresh rate. And this is a phone that is primarily targeted at gamers. So it makes sense to have that extra, extra high refresh rate for even more performance, more frames and all that good stuff for gaming. So additionally with the pro version of the phone, you get a split cell battery with 4,500 mAh and 120 watt fast charging which means that you can fill this phone up like in no time. In fact, you can get a full charge out of this thing in 17 minutes. Think about that, 17 minutes, the time it takes you to drive to the convenience store and back, you can have a fully charged phone with this thing. The cameras are nothing too special. There's a 64 megapixel primary shooter and other lens supporting it. It's a triple camera setup. There's a selfie camera on the front. Nothing that's really gonna blow you away. It's really the 18 gigs of RAM and that 165 hertz refresh rate that really is gonna make this phone stand out. There's also an improved sampling rate in terms of how fast the screen can register your touches and then send that to the game that you're playing. So if you're playing a game where speed is important, that could be the difference between winning and losing as this 500 hertz polling rate with one finger and 360 hertz multi-touch polling will basically make it so that if you hit a button on your phone, your input will be read slightly faster than the person you're playing against, which could be the difference between winning and losing. So as of right now, the phone is only going on sale in China, but it does have a global release schedule. The company announced that on March 16th, it will reveal more information about the global release. If the price ends up being the same when it comes to the US and other parts of the world as it is in China, we should be looking at about $1,100 as that's what the, the Chinese conversion rate is, $2 for the current phone. Obviously they could change it up based on the market and the needs of the market and the demands of the market and all that kind of stuff. But I would say for a phone with 512 gigs of storage, 18 gigs of RAM, 160 hertz screen, all that crazy stuff that comes with this phone, $1,100 seems like right about where I'd expect it to be. Maybe it could go down to 1,000, but I wouldn't bank on seeing this phone for much less than that. So when you think of the brand Razer, the first thing that probably comes to your mind is keyboards with lots of lights, mice with 7,000 buttons on it, headsets, speakers, expensive laptops, all that stuff. But today, Razer announced something a little different as the company announced a pair of smart glasses. So these are called the Razer Ansu smart glasses and basically they're designed to block blue light like many other glasses, but they also have speakers built into them that allow you to listen to music or games or any other thing you're doing right through your glasses, which is pretty cool. So each arm of the glasses has a 16 millimeter driver, which should deliver pretty good sound when you're listening to your music or games. It's not gonna rival a pair of super high end headphones with noise cancellation, obviously, but considering it's coming directly from your glasses, you don't have to wear anything extra. It's pretty cool and it's definitely convenient. As you might expect, these smart glasses come with an app that allows you to adjust the EQ for the music and all that other stuff. And you can even swap the lenses out for your prescription lenses. So if you don't want the razor lenses, which are not prescription based, you can easily get prescription lenses for them and have them put in. And then you have the smart glasses with the music playing through them, but you also have your prescription so you can actually see. Cause I don't know about you, but if I got a pair of smart glasses and they didn't have my prescription in them, I'd be walking into walls and stuff. These new razor glasses are launching today for $199, which actually doesn't seem that bad when you consider how much a pair of high-end glasses typically cost. If you were to buy a pair of Oakley's that were just glasses, they would cost you that much for the frames. And then when you add the lenses in, obviously it's more. So considering what these offer, they're actually fairly reasonably priced. Now, if you don't need the prescription and you're just buying them for the blue light protection, that's up to you to decide if it's a good value or not. $200 for a pair of blue light blocking glasses that don't offer any prescription benefit. The headphone part seems pretty cool, but I don't know if I can justify spending $200 on it. But if you're looking for a new pair of glasses anyway, these might be ones to consider. Look, we've all been there. You go to send something out on Twitter, you write your tweet, you think you're all witty, you click send and you realize, I made a typo. You can't edit it. 
You can delete it, but that's annoying, right? Well, Twitter is getting a little bit closer to letting you edit a tweet and that now the company is working on an undo send feature. So basically what happens is after you send a tweet, a little thing will pop up on the screen that says undo. You have a few seconds to click that. And if you do, the tweet will not actually be sent. It will come back and then you can edit it or you can do whatever you want with it, not send it at all if you said something offensive maybe, or whatever it is that you wanna do with the tweet, whatever your reason for bringing it back is. It's not quite as good as an edit feature, which is something that people on Twitter have been clamoring for forever. And Twitter has apparently said that they don't plan on doing it. Now what's interesting about it though is it only says your tweet was sent with an undo button. It doesn't actually show you the tweet. So you can't quickly scan it and make sure you didn't make a typo. You have to know you made a typo, have click send anyway, and then want to bring it back. So it seems like it could use a little bit of work. We'll see what happens with this feature once it is rolled out, if it ever is rolled out. It does seem kind of half done. It should at least show you the tweet so you can see if you have a reason to bring it back because how else are you gonna know? And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. This episode of MUO Tech Bytes is officially over. I have been Dave LeClaire bringing you the latest from the world of technology news. I hope you found this episode informative, and I hope you found it entertaining. And I hope you will click the like button, and I will see you in the next one.